All right, hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to another daily edition of Stock Market Mutterings Trade Review and Recap for the 15th of November. We're almost halfway done with this month. We're almost done with the year. So I know there's a lot of you out there who set all these goals back in January, especially when it came to trading. And you said, this is where I want to be as a trader. These are the steps I need to take to get me to where I want to be. And here you are with just a month and some change left. And you have not, you have not followed through or you have followed through and you just haven't got the success. Don't give up. Please don't give up. There's still time. There's still time to turn things around. There's still time to point yourself in the right direction. There's still time. The market will be open tomorrow. Take a moment, visit the link in list.com, click on the trade room tab. You can start trading with us right away. Now today, I'm going to give you a little bit of an education, an education that I've learned kind of the hard way over 20 years. And that is the stock market is a hotbed of nonsense and noise. The market always, it's like, if the market could be a person, it would be like a diva like the biggest diva you could think of, or like a three-year-old child that's sitting there whining with food, just spitting out of its mouth. Pick, pick one, okay? And what I mean by that is the market has to always have something to complain about, something to bitch about, something to hang its hat on, and this is the way it is. And what we have been going around and around and around with is tariffs. And every single time something comes up, whether it's tariffs, it's oil, the credit crisis. I mean, it does, how, how, how do you get much worse than the credit crisis when it comes to actual banks not being in business anymore? I mean, if anything's going to scare you, that's going to scare you. So it always has this event. There's always some dark cloud hanging over top of it that could potentially create some monstrous crash that everyone you know, falls over and dies from. And we're living in, in like going through plague times or something. I don't know. I'm just rambling. I'm just rambling. Now, are tariffs something that's important? Yes, it is. It could make an impact. We've been in a really strong bull market. We have a strong economy and something like tariffs could really change that landscape. But is it something that's going to just send us falling to our knees and crumbling like they're making it out to be? No, it's not. But it definitely could cause some havoc. And I think what you saw today is just the market at its, at its finest moment of indecision and ridiculousness. I mean, I can't quote back and forth because I've just finished. I'm, I'm exhausted. I mean, you had, we're going to have tariffs done. Then five minutes later, they're saying, no, we're, we don't have anything drafted up for this G20 summit. And they said, we're probably going to impose more tariffs. We're not going to impose more, more tariffs. I mean, this all happens. Let me pull up the market. All this takes place like at the same time in the afternoon. So we're just kind of cruising on down here. Market's not doing any, anything. And then all of a sudden right here, some tariff news comes out, positive tariff news, or maybe this G20 thing coming up here that's, that's going to fix it. And then it starts ripping and it's like, well, maybe it's not. And then it starts selling off and then it's like, well, maybe it is and, and, and so on. Look, here's all I got to say about it. 99% of the cases, actually 100% of the cases, because if you think about it, every sort of pullback ever in the history, going all the way back to the beginning of the stock market, even during you know, the, the crashes back then, every dip buy has worked 100% of the time. Over time, you recover from everything. And as I have gone through different kind of bubbles, scenarios, and things that I've heard that have had impact on the market, I really can't put any, I, I went through both the dot-com bubble and I went through the credit crisis. And I think when you come back through that, Nothing to me, since I've been doing this, could compare to what the, the actual fear of the credit crisis. I mean, we were at one point where banks, long-term banks, you know, businesses, and more than that, lots of businesses that were century or older that had been in business, going out of business, you know, where people were lining up at certain banks, not being able to withdraw money. I mean, that's like mass panic. And the government at that time showed you their commitment to stabilizing markets and taking care of markets. So what do I mean by this? Most of the time that you hear noise, whether it's on a smaller scale or it's a larger scale, it's just something that ultimately shakes you out of your position and derails you from the ideas that you have in your mind. This is what makes trading so difficult is we get super focused, right? And we have an idea and we're ready to execute and then something comes by, maybe we read a news clip or we see some social media tweets or something like that and it changes our mind. 
And you should be so confident in your trading and your process that you do not allow noise like this to get under your skin and derail you from your trading plan. So think of it like this way, just on a small scale. You, you look at something and you're like, I really want to buy this stock. I think this company's great. I like the way it looks, whether it's a chart pattern or it's a fundamental analysis. But you, you have an idea and you say, this is, this is going to work. And then somebody you respect on social media comes out five minutes later after you put on the position and says, I think this thing is a short, it's no good, all this stuff comes out. Do you change your mind right there or do, do, you, do you follow the person that you respect or do you follow your heart? Do you follow what you believe? Now, maybe they're right, but you know what I'm saying? Do you follow your process? Do you go ahead and let the trade work out for a little while or try it for a little while since you put all the research in there? What do you do? I mean, do you, do you actually know what, you, what, what to do? So my point in all of this, is tariffs, yes, they def I don't want to underestimate tariffs. They could definitely put us into a nice little sell-off, okay? And you should you should know how to trade through sell-offs. They, they offer great opportunities. But the noise that we had today, this back-and-forth action, it will work itself out. Eventually, the volatility, this craziness in the market, this indecision, this news one minute, news the next minute, kind of you know, back-and-forth, these wacky whipsaw moves, it will, it, this, this too shall pass, right? All storms shall pass, and so shall this. And regardless of what happens, I, I guarantee a trade deal will get done. There's too much trade between China and the United States, you know, for them to just stop. Now, there, there'll be nego there could be negotiations. There could be boats turning around. All They can always do that kind of stuff and really see how far. But at some point, some point, a deal will get done. And here's what's going to be the funny thing about the deal. Here's what's going to be so funny about it is that 99% of the people in the country will have absolutely no idea if it was a good idea, if it was a good deal or a bad deal. At some point they'll shake hands and it'll all work out and they'll throw out a bunch of numbers and no one's going to know damn bit none of us are going to know, right? Unless we actually see it in the stores, we're not going to know. And if we do, we'll just think oh it's just inflation or some raising prices. We won't even probably blame it on 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 the trade war. So that's where we are right now. thought I would share that with you. I think the overall thing here to take away from my round the bush rant here is, look, don't get shaken out, man. That's the market's job, really, is to shake you out, to play games with you. That's why we always say paper trading sucks, because when you paper trade, damn, you don't, you don't have the emotion. And, and emotion is the biggest struggle with what it is that we do. So let's move on. Did I tell you today was green? Today was green? And yeah. Two, three trades, two and one, two and one, two and one, two winners and two one. And I actually made a mistake. I kind of goofed up a little bit, but it was it was okay. First one is my good buddy Lulu. I've been kind of on the Lulu wagon here. If you remember, it, that was my first trade. Win was my first trade. Let me go back. I did do Lulu. We'll talk about that. Win was the first trade. I've been doing Win. My trades this month have basically been Baba, Win. Lulu. I've just been going around around the cycle there. So anyway, what I was looking at here was just continuing on some of the stuff that we've been building on and we've been talking about is that, you know, I'm still a short seller into any of these opening range gap ups. You know, I just don't trust gap ups. The only types of longs and the only type of bullish activity that I trust is if the market sells off, flushes, bases or does something like that makes some sort of a pattern data right makes some sort of a pattern and then moves off of that and shows some stability then i'm interested in longs but when you have a market that's just skidding and this is what happened i mean this is a classic thing of, of way traders and investors think they just get this green bar hypnotism and that is you go down five six days in a row and then you gap up, and what does everybody think? This is the bounce day, right? And then they just dive into that, those greens. And then they get sold off afterwards. So that, I'm going to continue to do that. And I did that with Win. We got a really nice bounce here and put in a really, really nice short. And I just, I just, got, I just got rid of it on the first pullback. I probably should have done a partial on it, but I'm not going to be too critical about it. You can see it was a, it was, it was a really good trade. You know, it had a little bit of size on it too. So I like the way the setup was with the wick up top here. This is a great, great blow off top indicator. Again, we talked about this yesterday. Remember when we talked about blow off tops and moves like that was that wick. That wick is really a great tool 
to catch reversals because, again, the speed in this was pretty strong. If you can do a playback, take a look at it. And once it started sinking here pretty fast, we had a nice pivot where we could control risk. And then the market itself was rolling over. So combining those two things together, along with a, a pretty steep RSI, it, it was nice. Ni ni nice little rollover. So then... By this time, everything's just tanking, and there's and, and same way with I'm not chasing anything. I'm not buying anything that's flushing either because we've seen this stuff continue to roll over, and I don't want to chase my shorts. So the second one was Lulu, which I just talked about a minute ago, and I was just kind of looking for a spot here to, to reverse it. So you remember yesterday, and this is the life of a trader. Yesterday, I was short Lulu. Today, I bought Lulu, and it was based on the same pattern that I gave you. Again, guys, watch that video yesterday about how to trade reversals. It's the same pattern. Now it's in reverse and on the same stock. So when we did this yesterday, if you go back here and you look, the thing with yesterday is it was the range. The thing had gone up. It's like four and a half bucks or something like that. And then it started ripping. So you're already really, really high with that range. And that's one thing that we look at. So today we have the same thing. It goes down four bucks and then it just flushes right underneath the low a day we pick some up there and you know it turned out to be a really good trade as you can see and i did a partial on this one i didn't make much on the second one i didn't definitely didn't hold it hold it this long it was tough at first you had a lot of back and forth action the market was in a little bit of an indecision period here but i was felt it look that's probably the floor for the day the way this thing is behaving, we're already down four and a half bucks. I mean, basically, if you if 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 win is down four, not win, but if Lulu's down four or five dollars, that's that's either way, up or down, minus earnings. That's, that's a lot. It's probably not going to go much further than that. That's a good good spot. So both of those worked out pretty good. Now, early in the day, I had this Netflix. And I was thinking, all right, look, if this breaks out over on this area, if this thing comes up here and breaks out, I'm going to buy it. And I put an order in there, a buy stop, and I forgot about. It. I forgot I had the order in. I I don't do that a lot, but I do it every every so often. And I kind of got stuck here a little bit because I wasn't paying attention, and then I got tagged on this 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 pop right here, and I ended up selling it just because I I really just do I didn't like the behavior. I could have made some money on it, but that's really not the point. I'm okay with it. The, 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 because you're going up here, we had this breakout right here, and I thought at this point, look, okay, it's going to do it for sure. You know, I held through all this, because as soon as I got filled, the thing sinks all the way down to, I think it was 290.60, 290.80 or something like that, I was, I was filled, and then it sinks down. Then it holds, you know, it's kind of basing back and forth, and these candles are wider than they look. This is 290 to 2889s is low nines. It's like dollar and some change candles back and forth. And then when it starts to break out here, I'm like, okay, this is the move. This thing's flagged, it's held, the dips have been bought, now it's breaking high. And I mean, it immediately follows up with like a $2 wipeout candle, and I'm like, dude, get, forget you, man. You can go up to 300 bucks, but you're going without me. That is just insanity move so this thing's just getting dirty and there's a thing we like to talk about clean charts and dirty charts that's a dirty chart i mean look at it you just look at the the wacky moves back and forth here it's just dirty and when you have a dirty chart like that it is really hard to just get a hold of it sometimes you know i mean you really get it's so easy to get shaken out right the noise it's just so easy to get shaken out so i'm going to leave it at that because it's it's thursday and i'm getting tired i'm getting tired good week another green day so we got a streak going i think it's two weeks now with no red day so hey pretty good huh pretty good we'll continue to build on that again remember i know i talk a lot about some certain things and i ramble sometimes that makes it difficult to understand but remember the market is full of noise totally full of noise and I know someday a trade deal will get done. And you know what? When it does, the market will spike. It'll spike. The market will go up 300 points when there's a, fi a final trade deal done. And it'll go up 300 points and nobody will know what the trade deal is. They'll just buy based on the news. Welcome to the stock market, right? You know, So you're, you're really having hefty headline risk now because if they come out tomorrow and Chinese say, we're not going to do a deal, then well, the market's going to go down 300 points. Yes, we're going to do a deal at some point. But we all have to kind of work through this trade accordingly. If you need help with that, take a moment, 
Visit the LincolnList.com. You know where I'm at. I will chat with everyone, yeah, tomorrow. And I hope you finish off the week well. Take care and trade well.